Hey King Street Kids, uh, my name is Sarah Fitch and I'd like to read a special story about a special tree with you. Uh, this book is called Poetry and it's written by Shauna Lavoy Reynolds and I hope you enjoy it. The snow had melted, the buttercups were blooming, and Sylvia celebrated winter's end by writing a poem about spring. She walked with Shell to the park at the top of the hill and read it to a squirrel. Here's her poem. Spring is here at last. I hope it doesn't end too fast. Like a bee, I'll sniff each flower and I'll enjoy each springy hour so much. It's a good poem. The squirrel seemed grateful. Sylvia tied her poem to a birch tree and headed home hoping that it didn't count as littering if it made the world more splendid. The next morning, Sylvia passed the birch on her way to school. From a distance, she saw her poem fluttering in the breeze. But when she got closer, she realized that it wasn't her poem at all. Here's what it said. I think spring is the best of the seasons for plenty of excellent reasons like birdie parents building nests where all the baby birds can rest and play. Sylvia's heart did a somersault. She never imagined the tree might write back. In class, Sylvia daydreamed about her new leafy friend. Sylvia, please pay attention, said Ms. Oliver. Yes, Sylvia, whispered Walt, the boy sitting behind her. Their classmates giggled and Sylvia sunk in her chair. At lunch, after lunch, Ms. Oliver taught the class about haiku. Sylvia struggled to contain her excitement in 17 syllables. All right, so a haiku is a three-line poem. There's five syllables in the first, seven syllables in the second line, and five syllables in the third line. This is the haiku that Sylvia wrote. White birch on the hill speaks out loud through rustling leaves. Great green poetry. Ms. Oliver gave Sylvia a gold star, but Walt doesn't look too happy, does he? It's not very nice. When the bell rang, Sylvia ran straight to the poetry. She folded her haiku into a paper boat and pushed it halfway into a knot hole. So, what's your name? Sylvia asked the tree. But the tree stood in silence. Are you shy like me? The tree nodded in the breeze and Sylvia understood. That night, Sylvia dreamed of rhymes falling like autumn leaves. She dreamed of cheerful songbirds greeting in perfect rhythm. Right, we've got cake and bake. We've got night and delight. She's got all these rhyming words. On Saturday morning, Sylvia rushed to the park with a heart full of hope. The knot hole was empty and she saw no note on the branches, but the whisper in the wind in the leaves above her was like a poem. Sylvia looked up and saw fragments of sky peeking through the treetop. She spoke the words as they blossomed into her mind. Sky so blue, grass so green, tree so tall in between, favorite friend in morning light, and under moon glow late at night. She's quite a poet. Sylvia selected a twig from the ground and gripped it like a pencil. By Sylvia, she wrote in the air, but that didn't seem right. Love, Sylvia. She waved her stick with a flourish, accidentally hitting a branch. A tightly folded ninja star fell to her feet. Sylvia couldn't unfold it fast enough. Here's the poem. I've wondered a while 
Can a tree and a child be friends? Your words give me hope. Sylvia felt a spark in her heart. Good thing she bought sidewalk chalk. She scrawled in big blocky letters so the birch tree could see. I never thought that I would see such lovely poems from a tree. I wish I could climb and live among the words you love to give. But if I lived up in a tree, I sure would miss my family, especially Shell. Sylvia thought it was the greatest thing she'd ever written in all her years. She wrapped her arms around the poetry. It was stronger, wiser, and kinder than the children at school. She knew she would always have a friend at the park. She didn't open her eyes until Shell barked. Walt was there, staring at the ninja star haiku sticking out of Sylvia's pocket. That's not for you, that's for my tree. Sylvia blinked. It was from the tree, just for me. Walt shook his head. Sylvia didn't understand. Had the tree she loved so much not given her a thing? Sylvia didn't want to cry, not at the park. Walt didn't want her to cry either. I'm sorry I was mean to you at school, he said. And Sylvia smiled. A friend of the tree is okay with me. She could never resist a good rhyme. Walt read Sylvia's chalk poem out loud. You're a wonderful poet, he said. You deserved that gold star. But who is Shell? She pointed. My best friend. My best friend's name is Shell. I think he likes the way you smell. I can tell, added Walt. The two poets giggled. Can I borrow your chalk? and Walt composed a new poem next to Sylvia's. If you want to share a poem with me, give it to the tall birch tree. Or if you need a friend for writing, playing with or sit beside,ing I'll be here for you joyfully, right beneath the poetry. The two friends sat a while side by side, backs against the birch. Sunlight and shadows danced through the leaves above them as they silently searched for the most marvelous words to describe it all. And that's the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed this story with me. Maybe you could come up with some poems to share with a poetry or a friend. I have a little haiku I came up with. It says, King Street Kids Online. How long will we be apart? Keeping close on YouTube. All right. I hope to see you again soon. Be well, my friends.